welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We are thrilled you're here. We have a really interesting conversation today with our guest, Shannon L. Watts, um, Principal Consultant of Key Fundraising. She's going to be talking to us about creating a culture of philanthropy, not just talking about it, not just kicking around the concept, but are we really doing this? And Shannon, I think you're going to take us to school today. I hope so. I think this is really, really fun. Well, we are thrilled um, to have you with us and so that we can learn from you and to really understand, you know, what's going on. Another thing that we love on the nonprofit shows, we have amazing support from Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. These are the folks that allow us to have these amazing conversations like we have uh, uh, before us with Shannon. You know, one of the best parts of the nonprofit show are our co-hosts. I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. But more importantly, Wendy F. Adams, superstar, Cultivate for Good. Welcome, my friend. Oh, it's a pleasure. And today is going to be a whole lot of fun. Really good. You know, Wendy, I know this is something that you and I have spoken about um, on the show, in the green room. And so I'm really thrilled that you're here as part of this, this conversation. And I also want to call out that you're the one that brought Shannon Watts to us um, and made this introduction. So um, that's even more impressive and, and more powerful. So Shannon, welcome. Um, I have to witness to everyone, please go on to keyfundraising.com where you can read about Shannon. But the best part is Shannon has these two massive animals that are stunning. And they're Great Danes, Shannon? They are. They're Great Danes. They're my babies. Well, they're not baby size. They are massive. And it's a really cool image. And you can learn about Shannon and the life that she leads that has um, brought everyone forward. But before we get into this, Shannon, talk to us about key fundraising and what it is you do and, and how you navigate this, this part of the nonprofit world. Well, key fundraising is my own one person shop. I am a one person consulting firm, key fundraising, uh, founded 19 years ago. I've been a full time consultant in the fundraising and development field for 19 years. And I work primarily with grassroots nonprofit organizations, which is one of the things we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. And I help them with a little bit of everything. I do grant writing. I do annual campaigns. I help with social media. These grassroots nonprofit organizations, a lot of them, their budgets are less than a million dollars traditionally, mm -hmm. and they need help in a variety of fundraising and development fields. So I work with those grassroots nonprofit organizations to help them raise more money. I love it because it seems to me, Shannon and Wendy, I'd love to get your opinion on this. These things that you talked about, they all weave together. And when they are well woven, they're so strong, like mm -hmm. they're like Kevlar, right? Uh -huh. And so I love that you can look at the the, the bigger picture and um, that that's just remarkable. And I think one of the bigger pictures um, is this culture of philanthropy. So what does it mean? Yeah. Well, a culture of philanthropy is where everyone shares responsibility for bringing resources into the nonprofit organization. And that doesn't mean that everyone's responsible for going out and making the ask with donors. What it means is that everyone with the nonprofit values philanthropy, understands it, its importance to the mission, and is all a part of the team to bring those resources dollars, volunteers, advocacy, two, four, so that mm -hmm. the mission can be accomplished. It's about integrating philanthropy into the mission so that your organization can do more and do better. Very brief summary. Would you like yeah. me to do more in depth? <laughs> no, because I'm looking at Wendy. Okay, Wendy, when you, th that was a beautiful description and very concise and articulate. How do you see this playing out, Wendy? Do you see, do you think that our organizations understand this? I, I, some, not enough. Not Janet enough. and I have been doing this work together since what, 2013? 
Probably. And 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 it has it's it's something we haven't talked about. We didn't have a definition for. We knew that something was missing. This foundational piece of everyone has a role to play. So the the answer to your question, Julie, is not enough of. But that's why bringing this forward, it's like, oh, this is the piece that's been missing, whether grassroots or the larger organization. Yeah. And I won't steal any thunder, but it's easier for one of those entities than others to, to get into this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so fascinating, Shannon. I've got to ask this one question before we move forward. When you go to an organization and you talk about this, mm -hmm. is there pushback? Is there somebody that's like, oh, no, 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 I'm the receptionist. Or, oh, no, 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 I'm in programs. I, I don't do that. That's for them over there. Like, are people yes. afraid? Yes, yes. And and we'll discuss that when we get to barriers. But that is one of the barriers. The That's your job, not mine. Yeah. But fundraising in nonprofit organizations, especially grassroots, that don't typically rely on those federal grant dollars coming through, Fundraising pays everyone's salaries. So yeah. everybody needs to be a part of the team to get the mission done. But yes, there can be pushback. And not just from staff members, from board members, from an executive director, and to build a true culture of philanthropy within your nonprofit organization, everyone needs to be on board. Okay. I, I love I love starting with that, Wendy. I really, really do. And and it is. I mean, there, what what other we go back to the why? our why and this yeah. makes that solidified right that the why is everybody's lift to do mm -hmm. what well, we we jumped into this space of okay so we know what it is is there are there these pushbacks what are those true spaces and places that you are feeling the most pushback mm -hmm. well talking about barriers one of them is the pushback the stonewalling the yeah that i don't do that and this is a conversation you need to have with your board of directors, with your staff, and even volunteers. Volunteers mm. are great with the culture of philanthropy, but it really starts with the executive director. If the executive director is not on board, it's very hard to build a culture of philanthropy. The executive director is traditionally the face of the organization, and they need to be living that philanthropic dream and understanding that they need to help bring in those dollars, help bring in those resources. Then the board also needs to be involved. And I would not tiptoe around that. <laughs> Do those board workshops. We're building a culture of philanthropy. Everybody has to be on board. Everybody has something to bring to the table. Of course, the board of directors need to give to the best of their ability, whatever is comfortable for them. Hopefully the, the nonprofit organization they serve on, mm -hmm. they are a number one, number two, number three philanthropic priority for those board members. They need to do that. And then they need to get the word out there and spread the word about the organization. They need to big, be the biggest cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. The staff need to be on board. And I do not suggest giving each staff member a fundraising goal like they give us, the oh. development professionals. You want them to set their own goals. That way they are more invested in it. And that goal doesn't have to have a dollar sign next to it. It can be I know this person in the community and I think they would be a great fit for our organization as an advocate or as a donor, or I know this great community opportunity where we should have a vendor table or where we should be talking about our mission. And they get more excited as they bring more resources to the table, whether it's dollars or not, they get more excited, but bring them in, talk to them about it. When you're hiring people, explain to them this is a nonprofit. we have a culture of philanthropy everyone is responsible for being a part of that culture for being a cheerleader for the organization from the cfo to the receptionist to the janitor everybody's on board mm -hmm. wow. i i love this for so many reasons shannon and i'm i'm so interested in how you you know using that word culture this is not a one and done, right? I mean, no. you're going to have to keep reminding folks. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I want to almost use the word train. Like, how do you keep rowing in that direction and building everyone up? Um, 
because I loved what you said out the gate. It's not necessarily a, a metric, but it's connectivity, it's mm -hmm. values, it's introductions. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do we do that? Well, it does take time. That's one of the big okay. barriers. It takes time. And then once you have it, you're not done. You got to keep it and you got to grow it. But the dividends it pays are astronomical. You have a more harmonious staff, better donor relations, increased fundraising. But yes, it does take time. And with time, make it a part of the culture. Talk about it. Don't just talk about it once a year when you trot out the strategic plan and say, oh, did, did, we, did we do the checks? But talk about it. Um, and not just during the holidays when it's the biggest fundraising season traditionally for nonprofits. Do the rah rahs. Celebrate. When a staff member gives to your organization, celebrate them. When a staff member brings in that and accomplishes their goal, celebrate that goal. And your celebration can look like different things. It could be, we got donuts for everybody today. Yay, <laughs> Shannon made a connection that brings in that, you know, yeah. they love us and it's a new connection. They've never heard about us. It could be donuts. It could be a pat on the back. How many mm -hmm. times as fundraisers have we raised dollars and okay, great. Now go raise 10% more has been the right. response and that deflates us. Yeah. So we don't want to deflate our staff with a culture of philanthropy. We're celebrating all the wins and yeah. all the wins are anything that brings in a resource to the nonprofit. The mic just keeps dropping. <laughs> I just, you said it, setting expectations. I mean, from new hire orientation, there's nothing that says, oh, I didn't know. I didn't understand. I didn't see my place, my role to play. We're setting it right up front. Mm -hmm. We say time, talent, treasure, but you really spoke into how we walk that out because we're not going to set for staff what those goals look like. It looks different for the development team, but we're going to make sure that we celebrate when a mm -hmm. new relationship comes into play and let them set that. Now they've got ownership of it. Gosh, that is game changing. Well, thank so, you. Wendy, let me ask you this. If we're not setting goals, but we um, are, I should say, we're not like giving goals, right? Yes. We're asking people to set their own. How would you see us um, measuring, monitoring so that we get to those celebratory moments and that we also encourage it? Like, what does that look like to you? That looks like as often as you're meeting with your team, that you're talking about that, that you're given space in those meetings for those celebrations, that it's not something that we set at the beginning and we pick back up at the end. It's got to be a part. There's the culture. That's the component of culture. And if I can add to that, it's not just with your team. It's not the development team or the executive committee. It's the entire organization. And another big part of a culture of philanthropy is that the development director, whatever title you have for that in your organization, is an executive level staff position. They're in the board meetings. They're part of the discussions. They are a decision maker. The development department is not in the basement, not in the back office where nobody can see it. And we only go there when we need money. They are a key part of the organization, a valued member of the team and on equal footing with all other executive leadership. Okay, so now before we go on to our next question, I got to ask you this, Shannon, when you go to work with organizations, how, and I'm just going to use this word, foreign of a concept mm -hmm. is this? Like when you go before somebody and you're like, okay, we're going to, we're going to really dig down deep and create a culture of philanthropy. And this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Can do. Yay team. Mm -hmm. But then when you move forward on the actual actions and specifics, what does that look like? I mean, are people like, yeah, I get it. Or, you know, how well, they it, it? it depends on the person. The person mm -hmm. that doesn't want to be involved is going to say, I don't really get it. I don't know about this. They get it. It's about fundraising. It's about bringing in resources of all types to the organization. So yes, if you're in the nonprofit world, you should understand that at this point. But typically it's a yay, let's go. This sounds great. And it's full steam ahead. And then people get tired and uh, uh, it takes a while to see the results. This is not going to be a 30 day transformation or a six month transformation. It takes years to build a culture of philanthropy successfully. But the changes keep adding up until all of a sudden, five years down the road, you're like, 
wow, we have doubled our capacity from where we were five years ago. Amazing. And I feel I feel confident that when you when we speak into and start to talk about the grassroots organizations, mm -hmm. that's where you're really seeing them embrace this culture of philanthropy. And I'm sure there's a tie between those two things. It is. It's easier for a grassroots nonprofit organization to develop a culture of philanthropy. In full disclosure, I just got and earned my master's in philanthropy and development from St. Mary's <laughs> University of Minnesota. Thank you. And I did my capstone project on this subject, a culture of philanthropy. It's not new. I did. There are lots of resources out there about it, but I did uh, my capstone on a culture of philanthropy and how that would impact grassroots nonprofit organizations. Cause those are primarily my clients grassroots. And mm -hmm. I thought the two would tie very nicely together. Although in a capstone, you're not supposed to give your opinion, <laughs> <laughs> which I learned, but uh, they do tie very nicely together. Mm -hmm. Grassroots nonprofit organizations, everybody's already cross trained. It's grassroots. Mm -hmm. You are the executive director, but you're also giving the tours and you're also looking at the spreadsheets and you're also, you might be the janitor too, as the executive director, you're also cleaning the bathroom. The program director helps across multiple programs. Uh, most grassroots nonprofit organizations have budgets of less than a million dollars. That's 92% of the nonprofits in the United States. A million dollars doesn't pay for a lot of staff positions these days. No. So everybody's cross-trained, which is great because everybody's a part of the team, which is the foundation of a culture of philanthropy. Mm. It also has the bottom-up mentality, grassroots. We're starting at the grass level and we're working our way up. We're not working our way down. So that is a natural fit for a culture of philanthropy. And then in grassroots nonprofit organizations, every gift counts. Again, there aren't a ton of federal dollars making up 90% of the budget. You're celebrating the $100 check, the $5 check, and the $10,000 check that comes in and, and makes your entire week. So every gift counts. And it also every gift counts in a culture of philanthropy. Mm -hmm. You know, Shannon, I'm fascinated by this so much. And again, congratulations on, on a major um, educational achievement. I personally, and I'm going to step off and step up onto my soapbox. Um, you know, our profession in our sector needs elevated education. And there's mm -hmm. not a lot offered out there. Surprisingly mm -hmm. enough, it's growing but we need to be celebrating and promoting the ability for people in the nonprofit sector to achieve this, this higher level of education um, because it's only gonna help everybody. It's, it's such an important thing. So I, I wanna take a moment and really celebrate that for you because I know that that's a, it's a heavy lift and so bravo. Um, when we talk about this concept of the grassroots piece as, as Wendy mentioned. I thought it was fascinating, Wendy, that that Shannon brought up cross train. And I had never looked looked at it that way. But there is a cross training, a thing going on. And what do you see with that when when you when you look out at the landscape? Well, what I'm seeing is that we now have vocabulary for it instead of this negative, I just have to do everything. No, I'm trained. I get to because now I have the, the uh, equipment um, resource to be able to do it. And, and going into grassroots, you know, there's not many of us, you know, it may just be that there's the one, but when you bring someone new on, you want to make sure that they understand fully what they're signing up for and get them the resources. So uh, yeah. it just changes the way that we view the heavy lift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's real. I, I love that you phrased it that way. Cause I think you're absolutely right. And I think it's, um it it's, it's also, kind of an interesting way for us to be more connected mm. to the impact of fundraising versus just numbers on a spreadsheet or, or I think frankly, and I'd love to get both of your opinions on this. I think a lot of times we surrender the stress of fundraising to people in development and we're like, that's their problem. Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah. Shannon said 92% of our 1.8 million nonprofits are grassroots. And I would say 99.9% .9 
of those think that it's the development's job to be able to bring those funds in. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. That number is even higher if we think about that's their job. And so, yes, to be able to hand that empowerment and that ownership from mm -hmm. the beginning, um, when, when Shannon started mm -hmm. to really flesh this out and put this together with this definition of grassroots and, and how it's coming together with, uh, it, it really just knocked me down and said, a vocabulary now that we can all grasp and to move forward on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. When you're out in the community and you're you're doing this work, Shannon, um, and we we kind of alluded this alluded to this a, a little bit earlier, but are you finding that there's a certain group of people that are like all in? I mean, you started off by saying the CEO or the executive director, they got a lead on this and they've got to believe in it. But do you find that there are other groups or or job descriptions pushing this concept more than others well of course the development department loves mm -hmm. the concept of a culture of philanthropy yeah. because they need help we need help when someone comes to me to talk to me as a consultant they're not coming to me because fundraising is already going great and they don't need me they're coming <laughs> to me because they need help in fundraising <laughs> isn't going great. So they are very eager to listen at that point in time. A lot of these grassroots nonprofits don't have a development department. They may have a development director or a development manager or the ED is responsible for it all. And no one person in a grassroots nonprofit organization or two people can do everything. Mm -hmm. And so they are eager to learn. They're eager to learn what it can take to develop a culture of philanthropy, because we do have some examples uh, among my clients where we have developed that. And so other people come to me, we want what they have. And mm -hmm. I respond, OK, this is what it takes. And it's going to take five years. Wow. It did not happen overnight. So the development department, whatever that looks like for the organization, is always very excited. And when a culture of philanthropy truly takes form, that development director or development manager, a big part of their job becomes managing the culture of philanthropy within their organization. Mm -hmm. It becomes talking to people, keeping it at the forefront, training people and being that raw, raw cheerleader but the results are exponential because it's not one or two people doing it anymore. It's the entire organization working mm -hmm. together as a team. And, and I've seen that in the operations in a larger organization who's starting to really hold, take hold of this culture of philanthropy because the HR directors are getting excited about it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to see all that turnover. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. someone knows from the beginning, this is who we are and this is what it means to be a part of this team. And that has changed. So there's a department that we might not think of so readily in this space who is really starting to appreciate that. And I think takes us to that place of how now we can build, but then how do we maintain and mm -hmm. grow this? And that's where I have seen that take hold. Mm -hmm. You can't build a culture in a larger organization. It's just a little bit more difficult because you have more people, more departments, et cetera, but it can be done. It's interesting because you know what? My first reaction to what you said when we first started this episode of the nonprofit show was I, I thought just the opposite. I'm like, oh, Shannon, how is a small ship going to be able to navigate these waters? No, it's it's got to be this is only for big institutions. Right. So I love that you flipped that around for me, because in my mind, all these years, I thought that this is really for that larger size of organization. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Yeah. The, the younger, the, 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 the grassroots are a little more mal palatable with this. And, you know, they're looking, they know we've got a lot to learn or we, we have to grow from the, from the beginnings. So I think they're just more open to, they're hungry for that, especially mm -hmm. if they can get those resources and that education. We've been talking about this on the show now for so long, professional mm -hmm. development. Right. Yeah. And that's not just in in our development departments, but across the board for people in the organization to understand why we're doing what we're doing and how yeah. what they do makes that happen. So we don't have much time left. And Shannon, this is such a fascinating conversation for me, because over the trajectory of my uh, career in the community, uh, not as a paid fundraiser, but as a community uh, fundraiser, 
I've heard this, you know, culture of philanthropy, we need to do this, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But how do we pull in those folks? I mean, when we are, when our development teams are meeting, our Mm C-suite, our boards, we have those opportunities to chat this up and Mm -hmm. and reapproach it. But how do we take, to Wendy's point, when we're looking at, at growing this, the folks from facilities management or marketing or programming, or maybe folks that are at a different location on our campus or off campus, how do we pull them back into this? Well, training is key and it's not just from one resource. There are plenty of resources out there. If you Google culture of philanthropy, you will get a lot of resources and not just a Google search, but getting someone who's done it to come in and talk. Think about the nonprofits in your area and who does a fabulous job and who seems Mm -hmm. like they always have it together and who seems like they always have cheerleaders out there talking about them and ask them if they'd be willing to come talk to your C-suite or your board or your staff and do they have a culture of philanthropy? Would they be willing to talk about how that transition took place or Mm -hmm. how they're keeping it? And I find that when you bring in a real life example and it's not pie in the sky, but nonprofit XYZ in our area has done this and yay, it's great. When you bring in those real life examples and put them in front of real life people, that's where it makes the difference. And that's where they see the light. Yeah. I love it. I think that's, that's a, a, tremendous amount of wisdom and we takes our definition of collaboration from saying it to doing it we want to share we really do Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. nonprofits are good people they like they like working together all you have to do is ask yeah 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 i think you're right and wendy I, i like your your approach and your attitude there as well because Sometimes we get so mired in, in our work and we're just like in our little world that we mm-hmm. forget to, to look out of the window and say, okay, well, who can we bring in and and how can we draw this inspiration and share? Um, you know, Shannon, this has been really great. I have mm-hmm. so enjoyed um, having you on and um, really, I, I want to say, Wendy, like reminding us, but at the mm-hmm. same time, giving us some new tools. Does That's that right. Sense? Yes. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. I've enjoyed being here. It's been a lot of fun. Shannon L. Watts, newly minted higher education. Do you have your mortar board? We should have <laughs> had you bring that um, with her MA and, and also a CFRE. So she knows what she's talking about mm-hmm. as a principal consultant of key fundraising. Visit keyfundraising.com. You'll learn more about Shannon, her work, her approach and um, the type of work that she's doing that really is such a pivotal piece, I think, of future and sustainable success. Um, It's not just a pie in the sky thing. It's a real approach that you you take into your organization. And again, when we use the word culture, that says it all, right? I mean, it's a powerful, powerful word. So Shannon, this has just been amazing. I also want to make sure that we thank all of our presenting sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, Fundraisers Friday, our new Friday episodes, Just Dealing with Fundraising, and Nonprofit Thought Leader. Wow. Okay, Wendy, you're a rock star, which we all know that. But thank you for making this introduction to Shannon and getting us um, in this this conversation. You know, today is the start of a new month um, for so many folks, a new season, a really critical season of giving and um, bringing everybody to the table on this is just brilliant. Absolutely. What a great afternoon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Hey, as we end each and every episode of the nonprofit show, um, we want to, first of all, talk about the nonprofits and the service that is being given and is desperately needed in the southern part of our country. There's been tremendous loss of life. There will be continued, uh, unfortunately, more and more scores of people that have lost not only their lives, but their homes and their businesses, and in in some cases, their communities. And our nonprofits are the ones that step up. So I wanted to give a shout out to 
to those people on the ground because it's really a, a frightening and, and, and dangerous situation that's still unfolding. So we send our best wishes to um, all of our nonprofit leaders um, and staff in that part of our country. And as we end each and every episode, we like to, to leave with this message. And it goes like this, to stay well so you can do well. Thank you, ladies.